Mortal Kombat 1 is here, and it's been a little bit of yes and no from me. The story is just as dumb and glorious as ever, and I'd never change a thing about it. Some of my favourite features are missing this time around, pinning moves to the screen, as well as my beloved AI fighter, so I can AFK grind while watching some anime. But one aspect that MK1 has absolutely killed it in is character designs and redesigns, giving some of these characters their best looks in their 30 year history. Mortal Kombat has always been a silly franchise, and its character designs have always reflected that, with crazy ridiculous characters that were meant to be stupid. But MK1 has toned down those crazy aspects and made its characters more grounded. Melina is usually in her human form, Reptile straight up has a human form, and I can look at the 3D era characters without bursting out into laughter. The design philosophy for these characters seems to have been making them more serious while still maintaining the flair, style, and recognition that makes this roster iconic. Another design philosophy was to get back to making MK characters hot. Seriously, look at these lineups and tell me they're not gorgeous. I don't know what these Street Fighter fans are talking about. Manon looks like a shrink wrap rotisserie chicken, and Aki looks like a human magpie. Meanwhile, they didn't just give Reptile a human body. They gave him a smooth-skinned, effortlessly hot and mysterious cut of meat. I mean, come on, surely lots of people have a Megan Fox vampire fetish. As long as she doesn't talk, that is. But in all seriousness, let's take a look at some specific examples in this roster where NetherRealm's character design team knocked it out of the park. Let's start with the poster boy this time around, Liu Kang. He had the most dramatic departure from his previous incarnations, as now he's attained godhood. But I love that NetherRealm hasn't just copied Raiden, and they've taken the concepts of Liu Kang and translated them to his new form. Raiden was always an intimidating guy, even before MK11. He had no sympathy for Outworld and took his role as protector incredibly seriously. Liu Kang was always a much kinder person, and this is physically reflected in his warm and soothing colour palette. No part of him feels threatening as Raiden did, with his hat obscuring and casting a shadow over his face. But MK1 Raiden also has a far kinder design, even with his hat returning and his imposing crackle of electricity cascading around him. This version of Raiden is able to connect with the player because of his eyes. They're no longer filled with immense strength, communicating to his opponents that he's on a different level from them. Instead, they sparkle with humility and the desire to help and protect all people, no matter what realm they hail from. And though Liu Kang now has those once imposing eyes, when they're put upon his mellow face and wavy hair, they soothe the player with a kind glow. Meanwhile, Outworld got some massive glow-ups, and again, everyone looks less monstrous and more kind. Reptile's aforementioned human body, which may be because his new Zaterran form doesn't fit well for fatalities, but it also makes him sympathetic. Speaking of sympathy, while Baraka's design hasn't changed all too much, the context around him has wholly reversed, making him a tragic monster rather than the gnarled beast he previously was. It's actually pretty genius. Instead of changing Baraka's iconic design into something hotter like the rest of the cast, by changing the context around his design, the player will interpret it as more appealing rather than horrifying. Netherrealm is cleverly playing on your emotions to change how you think about Baraka rather than change Baraka himself. And this goes double for Melina, and I never would have thought in a million years they would ever try to make Melina a sympathetic character, and throughout the whole story I was waiting for the other shoe to drop and for her to become the ravenous beast. But no, she maintains her loyalty to her mother and sister throughout the whole story, and somehow becomes my favourite character, and the change in Melina's design reflects that. She's wearing her mask like usual, but without her reptilian eyes glaring above it, she indeed looks like Katana's sister instead of her bane. But there's one character who had the biggest glow up they've ever had, and that's Shang Tsung. 
And again, Netherrealm is messing with our perception of the character. Now, Shang Tsung isn't sympathetic like Baraka, he deserved every punch, kick and spitball thrown at him. He's still the trickster and schemer he's always been, but this time, his design isn't lying to us. Even though most of the time Shang Tsung looks young, in the back of your mind you know he's just a decrepit old man, it's all part of his illusion about how nothing about him is truthful. But in MK1, he really is young, with no illusion, no soul absorption. For the first time in history, I can say with no caveats that Shang Tsung is genuinely hot. And yellow is such a good colour on him, it's smooth but not too exuberant, fitting with his slyness. He's much more cat-like in MK1 because of his new claw, fitting in with his tendency to stab you in the back with a more eloquent weapon. Mortal Kombat 1 may go down as a divisive entry in the franchise, and is a step back from the content in previous Netherrealm games, although MK11 also launched in a pretty bad state. But the design team for MK1 has knocked it out of the park with characters that look far more tame yet also maintain their iconic looks. Although I have a sneaking suspicion the reason these characters look so friendly now is to add a bit of emotional trauma to the fatalities this time, this is the best the MK roster has ever looked.